Hello everyone, this is my NC MX-5 or Miata, also called the Roadster here in Japan. Today I'm going to be removing this plastic cowl on the front and uh, I'm going to show you how I do it. I'm going to be swapping it because previous owner tried to remove it and uh, ended up putting some gouges here when trying to get this uh, cover off. There's a screw underneath here that holds this on. And uh, also there's a rubber strip that goes along here all the way across to the other end and uh, that was deteriorated on mine so i looked on an auction site here in japan yahoo auctions it's uh the biggest one it's bigger than ebay actually and i managed to find this entire uh cowl piece in pretty good condition no gouges near these covers and it had a good weather strip attached to it so uh, I wasn't able to find just the weather strip on its own, so I thought, hey, might as well. I'm going to be swapping this whole thing. The tools you will need are a crosshead screwdriver, a really fine and thin flathead screwdriver. You'll need a ratchet, maybe an extension, and you'll need some sockets. Uh, I'm not sure what sizes I'm going to need, so I've got everything between 8 millimeters all the way up to 14, uh, and that'll cover all the main sizes used on most Japanese cars. Step one is you're going to want to remove these uh, rubber covers on the nuts that hold your wipers on, and you'll need to do that on both of them. Uh, just use your fine flathead screwdriver to pry them off, or pry up, pry them up just a little bit, and then you'll be able to get your fingers under there and pull them off. And then I'm gonna use a 14 mil socket to get these nuts off and then take the wipers off. Tip when removing these wipers, don't just try to yank them off. What you'll need to do is release some of the tension here that's caused by the spring on the arm. So what you do is you push this joint down while holding it down like that with one, one hand. Use your other hand to take it off here. Next, this is where the really thin flathead screwdriver is gonna come in handy. If you have one that's too thick, you're just gonna end up like gouging uh, the plastic uh, around this cap. All right, just a tip for getting these uh, covers off. The part where you want to stick your thin screwdriver is going to be right here. Um, even though the, the actual clips are going to be here and here, it seems like that's the best part to kind of slide your flathead screwdriver in. Um, if you kind of just push right in, it should kind of pop out. And you want to do the same on the other side. Push in, uh, push your screwdriver in, on the side that's close to the center of the vehicle. All right, once you've taken those screws out, one there and one on the other side, before you try and remove this plastic thing, ooh, just caught it, just uh, squished a mosquito. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, these little holes here, that's where the clips for the weather strip go. Um, this is gonna be held on with the clips for the weather strip. It's gonna be over on top and holding the plastic thing down. So you'll need to kind of get underneath with a flathead screwdriver and push the little claws in and gently remove them. There are also a few more, more claws, you can see right there, that kind of slip underneath the metal. So what you need to do is slide it outwards and then pull up. And you need to do that all along. There's, there's a few more um, claws like that further down. All right, as you're um, removing it, you're gonna see the uh, windshield washer hose that's connected there. So there's a little uh, plastic coupler over there. Uh, disconnect it there, you'll be able to separate these two halves. And as for the part where it attaches here, I think there's another coupler underneath. So you'll need to look underneath and disconnect that. And then you'll be able to just lift this whole thing out. Right, so underneath here, there's uh, the intake for your air conditioning system. And as you know, in these cars, there are no filters. Uh, there's no cabin filter, there's no air conditioning filter. So if you want to add one in there, an aftermarket one is available on Etsy. Uh, I think it's 3D printed. Um, you can do that by removing this. Now, I actually got a, a one that's produced and sold here in Japan locally um, to do the same thing. Um, and I'm going to show that to you in just a moment. Oh, and uh, to remove this, you just got to remove these plastic clips. They go all along there. And then this just lifts out. And you should be able to see it right there. Um, so down there, you can see the, the gray edge of it. So it's that oval thing. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to pull it out and show it to you. And there it is. So this thing, uh, it's two pieces. There's a, there's a base part where you can see this uh, little net here. And 
there's a cover that fits over it. Now this uh, white paper uh, filter element that you see, this is actually something I picked up from the local dollar store and I just cut it out to size myself and you can just uh, replace that as you need to. Um, and also this uh, little um, foam stripping around the edge, uh, I added that on my own as well. Um, just want to make sure there are no uh, leaks coming through. Now installing it is a bit of a pain. Uh, you'll need really small hands and you'll need to kind of squeeze in there and you'll need to get it in there and just this just kind of snaps in place. You can see the, the claws or the clips there. Uh, there are four of them and it just uh, goes in like there and then it just snaps in place. Uh, there's no orientation, doesn't matter which way it goes, but you just got to line it up and push it down to make sure the claws snap in place. So now that you got the cover off, you can see how disgusting it is. Uh, it might be a good time to clean it because you probably won't get another chance to do that uh, in a while. So I'm going to do that right now. Just use some uh, regular shampoo or spray detailer and uh, microfiber cloth. Something else I'm going to do while I'm here, just uh, preventative maintenance. Uh, this here is the uh, wiper motor. So uh, you can see, if you have a look at it, it's pretty easy to figure out how it works. So there are these uh, long arms and they're attached to a few hinges and those hinges will, are, well, they're going to work better if they're lubricated, obviously. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I mean, that grease is old and, and nasty. So I'm going to use some uh, parts cleaner or maybe carb cleaner, give that a really good clean, um, use a brush to get in there and just get off as much of that gunk as I can. And then I'm going to uh, get some waterproof grease and put some fresh grease on it and grease it all up again. So I'm going to do that hinge, uh, the hinge underneath the motor and the hinge on this side as well. Okay, so I've got two types of grease that I'm going to be using here. Um, one is this stuff. This is uh, really, really nice stuff. It's um, high temperature marine grease. So it's waterproof as well, or water resistant, I should say. Um, and uh, this is the stuff I use on almost everything on the back of brake pads and whatnot. Um, and then I've also got this stuff, which is cheaper uh, spray grease that I just got at my local hardware store. Um, this doesn't have the same water resistant properties that this does, but because it's in a spray can, it's, uh, it's a lot easier to get into those really tight spaces. Um, and, it, and it also has a, a much lighter uh, viscosity, so it, it kind of flows a little bit better and it's going to flow into those tiny little gaps and whatnot. Um, so I'm going to use both. Um, I'm going to use this, put some on my finger, try to get it as far as I can reach, and I'm going to use this to kind of spray a bit more liberally um, just to hit all the spots that I missed. So I've got the replacement uh, cowl cover thing in place, and what I've done is I've also kind of wiped it down with some plastic uh, dressing or vinyl dressing just to make it make that black uh, look that much richer. Getting the rubber stripping on is just a matter of uh, snapping it, uh, snapping the clips into those holes and you're all done. Putting it all back together is just the reverse of taking it apart. So there you go. Well, if you want more little videos like this about NC MX-5s or Miatas or even about that motorcycle in the back, subscribe and you'll be the first to know when new videos drop. Thank you so much for watching. Catch ya. Bye.